ladies and gentlemen, on the line from West West Phoenix, Arizona. We have Stick High. What up, Stick? What up with it? How y'all doing? Man, doing good, homie. Doing good. Thanks for joining the program, man. Man, thanks for the invite. I appreciate it. Now you're from West Phoenix. Thank you, man. Uh, now, as I was doing my research, I've heard some some areas pop up like Maryville. Are you around that area? Yeah, that's where I'm from. I'm from the Maryville area. Bam. So I'm on it, baby. I'm on it. All right. Okay. So, so from what I understand about Maryville, it, you know, they, I guess that the city was based, it was, um, was kind of born, I guess you would say, like in the 60s. It was a nice suburb area, you know, back then. Prime real estate, from what I understand. Is, uh, what's West Phoenix looking like nowadays? I mean, is it the same, same type of West Phoenix that it was in the 1960s? Oh uh, hell no! Nah. I guess I guess when we went uh, more minorities moved towards that way, then the white people moved further away from us and stuff. So uh, th- them days been over a long time ago. <laughs> now let me ask you. Uh, also, growing up, I heard a lot about Phoenix or Arizona, I should say, being a city that was you know racist towards blacks and Mexicans. Public Enemy headlines like, "By the time I get to Arizona." And we heard about crazy voting laws and, and, and you know, them pulling over Mexicans and, and, and messing with them and putting them in jail. Like, is that an accurate depiction of, of Arizona? I know they're a conservative state, right? Well, yeah, Arizona is pretty much a Republican state, but it's, it's like they barely win every year. They barely win, like, every year. Like, it, it, like if, it, if it come down to, to win in Arizona, they're going to probably win, like, 58% to 48%, you know what I'm saying? They barely win every time. But oh, okay. uh, the thing is, um, thing is uh, uh, like, even when uh, when they didn't want to give us the Martin Luther King holiday and stuff, we've been marching yeah. out here in Arizona and stuff for the Martin Luther King Day. The thing is, it wasn't recognized as a national holiday by the government. Uh, black people as a whole, we never stopped celebrating the holiday, the, uh, the, the uh, Martin Luther King holiday. Yeah, I remember they tried to they tried to stop that for, for being a national holiday. That was a big story, like all over the country. I remember that. Well, the reason they brought it back was because the NFL players was uh they told them they wasn't gonna do do no Super Bowl here if um if they didn't make it make it a national holiday here. So then you know that's messing with money. So then they had to get their act right. So that's what that's how it, that, that's how it ended up changing. But my grandpa was one of the advocates. That uh, press for um, civil rights out here. Uh, make sure that, that make sure that we get it in law and stuff. My grandpa uh, worked at uh, was a, is a big attorney out here in Arizona. I remember back in the day when I was growing up, before we had Kush, before we had all these weed stores out here in California. Arizona had the bomb weed. I mean, people in LA would go to Arizona, grab a few pounds bring that shit back to LA and sell out in 24 hours. I mean, for whatever reason, it, was, it wasn't like that in, it was Kush or whatever, but your, your quality of weed was better back then. Even so, we called it Arizona. Are you familiar that other states were, were with your weed like that? Uh, yeah, man, you know, Arizona, it, it's, one of them, it's one of them states right now, you know, that, well, it's been a state where, you know what I'm saying, where it come through, we right next to the border, you know what I'm saying, the Mexican cartel out here, of course. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know what I'm saying? They're gonna be they out here. You know what I'm saying? You know they, we're gonna have some shit out here. <laughs> yeah, I remember it was hard to get your hands on that AZ band. It seems like it came to LA for like two weeks a year, and then when it did, we snatched it up. Man, we trying to get that tally though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, now, yeah, now we got tally out here. Away. We definitely lead the way. You damn right. We need that Cali. Cali got that bomb shit, you know. Uh, shit, Cali influenced the whole country. You know what I'm saying? California is big on the whole country. I want to chat a little bit about uh, your neighborhood specifically. What what neighborhood are you from? I'm from Insane Forty Third Avenue, Insane Click Gang Forty Third Avenue, and Thomas. You know what I'm saying? Um, my niggas is Crips, my niggas is G's, my niggas is Lopes. You know what I'm saying? Um, my hood got assays in it, my hood got niggas in it, my hood got white people in it too. And shit, we just, 
We are fam, bro. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Well, 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 off top, I grew up in in Long Beach, and Insane's is one of the biggest gangs in Long Beach. Is there an affiliation between you two? No, there's actually no affiliation. It's actually a, a huge coincidence. You know, think for for a while I didn't even know there was another Insane until I did my research into it and stuff. So it's like mm-hmm. it, 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 it's pretty dope, though. But I know a lot of people that from Insane they come out here. And uh, we saw them love, and they saw us love, too. So it's all good. So, now, to the best of your knowledge, when did your hood in St. 43rd, when did they actually start? 1994. Okay. We, we, we was young. We were some young guys who put together the block. You know what I'm saying? We were some young guys. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? It's been around for a while. This year. We've been around over, 40, uh, over 20 years now and stuff. You know what I'm saying? We we some young guys. We, we still some young guys still. Were you there at the beginning, or what year did you get put on? Uh, I'm original. Okay, so we're talking 1994. 1994. All right. Mm-hmm. Take me back to that day. Did you did you start Did you start the hood? Did one of your homies come up to you? Hey, we were starting this. Did someone from out of town bring it? How, how did the Insane Forty Third? How did they? Um, Come yeah, in, you know, the homies started to do it. And shit. I seen a lot of gang violence out here in Arizona and stuff, and a lot of my friends want to be, they want to be involved in other than gang culture and stuff. And I don't know, I, 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 I just seen a lot of people dying and getting fucked up in other hoods and shit. And I just felt like if they was gonna be involved in something, then maybe we should start our own shit versus. Getting involved in somebody else's shit, and I lose some of my friends that I really love and shit. So we can protect each other in the same type of way. So there, uh, we we just we decided to do it on our own. Okay. What were some of the gangs that you remember before your hood came into play? The biggest hood out here in Arizona is Westside City Crip, Westside mm-hmm. City Crip, Blue Hill, uh, Tenth Avenue, and Sixteenth Sixteenth. You know what I'm saying? That's uh, that's uh, the, on the west side, west side Buckeye, Buckeye Road. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they known for putting in work. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, the south side got a lot of dope ass hoods and shit. You know what I'm saying? Blood, the uh, Park South Crib, Broadway Gangsters, Lindo Park. They got uh, the this the Bloods. They got the Southern Bloods. They got um. All the SA hoods and stuff that's over on the south side, south side posse. You know what I'm saying? Uh, on the west side, uh, Wedgwood, Hollywood. You know what I'm saying? Um, Maryville. You know what I'm saying? There's a, a colorblind. Um, uh, uh, man, there's just so many hoods out here in Phoenix. Midnight. Uh, so many hoods out here in Phoenix and shit. But, um, I don't know. Uh, I guess we learned, uh, we had a little, we had a little trials and tribulations as far as game banking go and stuff. But I feel like I've seen the city grow. I've seen the city change and stuff. Uh, you know what I'm saying? The city, city learned. Uh, this, this, this still gang violence, but at the same time, it ain't like where you can't walk down the street no more. This type of shit. You know what I'm saying? Back in the days, you know, the only one to know where you're from. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? But now it's like. You could walk down the street. Your kids could actually walk down the street without getting pressed. Yeah, I think it's like that in general around the country, thankfully. Because us growing up in the 80s and 90s, which I'm in my 40s, so I definitely did. Los Angeles in the early 90s was a war zone, dog. Like every other block was a war zone. Um, take, talk to me about what it was like in, in 94 in, um, in Phoenix. Oh man, 94, it was crazy, man. It's like, you go outside, people glad to meet you. They only, they only want to know where you're from. They don't care about, <laughs> they don't care about your name. They don't care about none of that shit. They just want to know where the fuck you're from. And if you say the wrong thing, then you know what I'm saying? You might have to handle that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You'll be walking down the street, minding your business. Somebody ride by, hit you up. You know what I'm saying? Pull over. <laughs> they want to meet you. They want to, they're glad to meet you. <laughs> Where's you from, yeah. nigga? <laughs> Sounds about like what it was like growing up in LA in the, in the 90s. They even did things as, so far as they banned us from wearing certain clothes to school. Like, we couldn't wear British Nikes because it said BK. We couldn't wear Raiders 
gear, like there were certain things that we couldn't uh, wear out here um, by by force, by the schools, and by choice. Because once gangs started popping, I stopped wearing red and blue altogether. To this day, I just pretty much wear black. <laughs> Well, that, 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 well, that's why they started uniforms out here for the younger kids in uh, elementary and stuff because of gangs and shit, gang violence and stuff. And they don't want to, uh, and and they did it also for the for the poor kids too and stuff because they don't want every all the kids that, that feel like uh, feel like uh, they're different than other kids or whatever and stuff. So they they make the uh, all the elementary kids start wearing the uniforms now to school. So you don't have to be, wear red, or you don't have to wear blue, or you know, everybody's wearing the same stuff. What years would you say you were most active? Shit, what year was most, I don't know. The whole 90s was active, early 2000s was active. active. Um, like, Right now, it's, it's, I don't know. The, right now, this kind of era is just like a whole different era, era right now. It's, all good. It's, it's peaceful. It's good. It's a good thing. And at the same time, you can tell like the, the youth is different. It's just the way that they, they, they brought up different because they brought up in peace versus like they wasn't, they're, they're not being pressed right now. So it, that's a good thing at the same time. But I don't know. Um, I don't know. These young niggas, is, they different than us. They are, they whole life, they way different. Yeah, you could say that's why. <laughs> different in every way. You know what I mean? Um, the drugs they're taking, the the way they're dressing. It, it, I don't know, dog. <laughs> I'm just out of touch. I'm 42, so. Right, right. Back in the days and stuff, we come from the era of selling dope and, and seeing motherfuckers, uh, seeing how crap up the communities and shit, you know what I'm saying? So we uh, we learn how to, our generation, we learn how to stay away from white. Now these motherfuckers is doing white and they telling everybody they're doing it. It's like, <laughs> it's, it's different. Yep, yep. It, it, yeah. Back in the day, if someone did, you know, snort a little coke or something like that, they, they kept it under wraps. They didn't, definitely didn't go on no damn social media and talk about it or go yell at the top of their lungs or pop a bunch of pills on camera. It's a different, right, right. Yeah, that was frowned upon back in the days. Mm -hmm. I guess it's cool now to do this shit. You know what I'm saying? Everybody want to be Scarface. I mean, I don't know, man. Some of these young cats is dope as shit. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a shame what happened to Nipsey Hustle. Rest in peace, Nipsey. You know what I'm saying? Nipsey was so dope. You know what I'm saying? I've been the first time I heard Nipsey Hustle was 2010. And when I first heard him, I knew he was going to bring the West back. When I first heard Nipsey, I was like, who is this? This guy's going to bring back the West Coast because he had that real West Coast sound. And he was really talking about something, you know what I'm saying? And um, it's a shame that we have to lose Nipsey to some bullshit. Yeah, that hit L.A. so hard. And you guys being so close to L.A., I'm sure it hit you guys hard as well, right? Yeah, it hit, it hit us hard. We had a uh, we had a Nipsey Hustle dedication day out here and stuff. Uh, affected uh, affect, affected affected the black community. You know what I'm saying? It really it really affected us. You know what I'm saying? It, God, it's just sad. It's just sad because you know everybody know there's more to it. You know what I'm saying? It's just we can't prove what what it, what really is, what it is, but we know what it is. But we we can't prove that what it is. You know what I'm saying? It's just like it's a shame. It's like any anybody that's out here that's trying to do something for the black community. You know what I'm saying? It's being targeted a certain type of way, and that's that shit is just, man. That shit is just man. It's just it's crazy. You know what I'm saying? We can't have nobody. We can't have plot. We can't have Biggie. We can't have Nipsey. Yeah. Just, ah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, that that definitely was was. Some shit. Let me ask you, how could something like that have been prevented, in your opinion, if it could have been? You know, something like Shitty Cuz coming and shooting you, you know what I mean? Shitty Cuz shouldn't even have a chance to get to Nipsey in the first place. Why mm -hmm. Why he got to talk to why, why he talking to Nipsey? Why didn't somebody approach that nigga? You know what I'm saying? He had no, he had no business saying nothing to Nipsey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's so true, man. I'm surprised he's still alive, but what you, I don't know if you're aware, but unfortunately, and this just contributes to more people of color dying. So I'm not bragging about it or really happy about it, but a lot of uh, shitty cousins' family got 
taken off the map like two weeks yeah, after that that's, fight. Within that's two weeks. I heard. I, I heard. I heard they was knocking them down. <laughs> You can't, you can't make an attack on the king and expect the knights not to move. Yeah. But the, but the thing is, they have been, it's like, it's like they always try to do. They try to cut their head off the snake. You know what I'm saying? It's like shit. They, they already completed their mission. Yeah. And I hope this is a lesson to people out there who are thinking about getting into the street life or, you know, just, just maybe towing that line or whatever. Think about what you're doing because... Speaking of shitty, because killing someone like this, and, and then it comes back and haunts their family. So you could be putting your aunt at risk, you'd be putting your cousins at risk who don't even know what the hell you just did or what you are doing. So that's something that I, I hope that, that that was a lesson that was learned out of this whole thing. Yeah, it's, it's sad. It's a, it's a loss all the way around because the motherfuckers who start the shit, you know what I'm saying? We know, we know that the government has something to do with this shit, you know what I'm saying? But the motherfuckers who start the shit, you know what I'm saying? Now they they ain't gonna shoot they shit up. You know what I'm saying? They go shoot. They gonna shoot somebody that had nothing to do with it and shit. You know what I'm saying? Shitty cousins, shitty cuz cousins don't know what the fuck this nigga doing with his spare time and shit. They got they they, they grown and they doing their life. You know what I'm saying? They living their own life. You know what I'm saying? They don't know what this nigga out here doing and shit. And then now they gotta pay the cost because this nigga that did some dumb ass shit, but. When the nigga first got arrested, he said he said that they gave him seventy five thousand dollars to put the hit. I didn't catch that. Yeah, he said he he the first thing he said he said the Illuminati paid. We recently lost an up and coming rapper who everybody said was going to be the next you know one of the next big things out of New York, a crip rapper by the name of Pop Smoke. Uh, what are your thoughts on rappers with gang ties and how they should move around when they're out of town in other cities? I don't know. When you, when you, I mean, you got to survive anywhere you go. I mean, uh, I, I don't know. I, people talk about you got to check in and all this weird ass shit, nigga. You a grown ass man. Like, well, I look like checking in too. That's that's some crazy shit, you know what I'm saying? Niggas ain't checking in when they come up my state or whatever and shit. I, I, I don't get it, you know what I'm saying? As far as us being a, a, a race that's supposed to be uh, being about progressing and getting together and shit, you know what I'm saying? And this, this happened right after this, uh, after this death, you know what I'm saying? This is like, uh, this happened this year, you know what I'm saying? It's like, what are, what are we doing? What are we doing? You know what I mean? Well, we storing our own people and shit. We storing our own kind. I I don't get it. I don't, I don't like it. I think it's stupid. You know what I'm saying? So, me personally, I just say, uh, if you out here in the streets and you live by, if you say you live in a certain type of way, then you better you better stay on your ten toes, man. You know what I'm saying? Because there's some people that's always out here trying to motherfucking shortcut the game and shit. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to work hard for their money. They want to just they want shortcut to the money. You know what I'm saying? And that's why motherfuckers is doing senseless, dumbass crimes and shit like that to just try to come up real quick and shit and shit. And they put they like oh, they f***ing off their whole life and then we lose all the way to the whole circle because now that nigga's in prison and that nigga's dead. Yeah, I I ask every single rapper who is is in a gang or who was in a gang or who's involved in gang activity on my show. I ask them that specific question. And I literally get 50-50. 50% of people will say, hell yeah, you need to check in with somebody. And the other 50%, just like you, say, what, what do I look like? I'm a grown man checking in with someone. Uh, do you understand the other side? I mean, do you, do you just, like, let's say you had a show in Tennessee. I'm just throwing that out there. I mean, are you cripping? Are you, like, covering your cut? Like, how, how do you go about, you know, going into someone else's territory like that? Shit, I just go in there because I'm a man. Nigga, I could rent a hotel. If Bill Gates could go, he could go to Arizona. He could go anywhere in the world. Why the fuck I can't? Why the fuck? Because we're storing our own kind. That's, just, that, that, that's dumb to me. It was like, nigga, I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Go, why the fuck Zimmerman riding around this motherfucker? Why didn't you why nobody had stored this Zimmerman yet? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's stupid. Kind of on the same topic, hip hop, but on a whole other spectrum. Takashi Six Nine, 
I know you know the name. I'm sure you know the story. Yes, right, sir. You're familiar with the story, right? Yes, sir. Okay, cool, cool. What are your thoughts in hindsight on the whole Takashi 6 9 situation? You know, just everything from them and That nigga the snitch. The it is what it is. That nigga snitched on it. He snitched on himself. He snitched on his homie. And, and it was like, well, they, they was going to kill him, nigga. You supposed to be supposed to be somebody. You, you trying to be out. You trying to be out here on the streets. You live by code and shit. You know what I'm saying? And if you out here telling on yourself and telling on other people and shit, just trying to get yourself less time or whatever and shit. He's just a dumb. He's, a, he's like you are gonna do the shit, nigga. You know what I'm saying? You go down with the shit, nigga. And, 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 and actual, all actuality, anytime they start asking you questions, they don't know shit. So you, the best thing to do is to shut the fuck up, get in the tub. You know what I'm saying? So by the, I don't know. I guess by telling, I guess it did help him. I guess he's free now. So you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I mean, I'm not gonna bump into Takashi sixty nine, motherfucker tape ever. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and it's like you all tatted up. You trying to you trying to present yourself like you're a hardcore blood and shit. And you out here disrespecting, you disrespecting they hold the, everything that the bloods that put together and shit. You know what I'm saying? It's, but you say you represent something that's like that. You know what I'm saying? It's like these niggas is real street niggas. This shit ain't no motherfucking gang. You know what I'm saying? And you out here, you saying you you about that life. And then when the shit hit the fan, nigga, now everybody got to go because you got to go. It's like, nigga, you a bitch ass nigga for that. How at fault? do you think the gang is for letting somebody like that get close to him? Because he obviously had no gang ties and they just saw a money machine right there and someone said, yeah, why don't you come join us, pop up our gang and, you know, we'll make you the biggest thing in the world. I mean, you got to give the gang some flaw too, right? Yeah, they took a loss because they they, 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 they decided to roll with some fake shit and that fake shit put they said it got them into some real shit. <laughs> he said he'll be playing with a fake ass nigga and said, what the fuck do you think this nigga gonna do? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like you go out here still you go out here to go pull a lick where the nigga who ain't never pulled a lick. You know what I'm saying? What the fuck is you doing, nigga? What you think he's gonna do when he get got? <laughs> he used to, to tell, he used to save his fucking on ass. He ain't never been in no situation like that, so of course he's gonna tell. Yeah, and unfortunately, there are a lot of people of color in jail right now doing 15, 17, 22 years behind this. What are your thoughts on rappers who actually join gangs after they're famous, after they're millionaires? You know, like the Lil Wayne, like the Chris Brown, like the... You I know, think that shit is so fake. Like, it's so fake and it's making, it's, it's, it's watering down the gang culture for one. It, it waters down the gang culture, and it's just, it, it's, it, 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 and it's fake, you know what I'm saying? When Lil Wayne did bling bling and all that stuff, Lil Wayne wasn't no blood and all that stuff. And then I guess when Mac 10 went over, as soon as Mac 10 went over there to uh, cash money, he turned all them niggas out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yep. Mac 10 went over there and turned them niggas out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I, yep. hey, he shot out to Mac 10, you know, he, he, that just proved how beastly. The West Coast is alone, nigga, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? That, that, like I said earlier in this interview, the West Coast influenced the whole country. You know what I'm saying? Now and now the whole East Coast bloods now. There's, there's, East, there's bloods on the Crips on the East Coast. It's like, nigga, it, that shit is powerful. You know what I'm saying? Uh, back in the days yeah. and shit, you would never hear about, you would never hear about a blood or a Crip on the East Coast. Like, nigga, that's unheard of. When, it, when NWA came out, Gang, gangs spread across the country. I mean, that wasn't the sole reason, but they they were one of the reasons gangs spread across the country. Colors, you know, Hollywood has always had a... Uh, a right, right. Nerdy, right, colors. When colors came out, I mean, gangs were popping up in Idaho. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. That's the influence of the West Coast. The West Coast influence is powerful. You know what I'm saying? It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's tremendous out there. There's a tremendous influence out there. And... Um, I don't know. I guess people embrace it a certain type of way and shit. And um, it's, it's a good thing. It's a bad thing. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know what I'm saying? You just don't want all, all this watered down ass shit. You know what I'm saying? And, and all over the place. But at the same time, 
It's a salute to the originals, nigga, you know what I'm saying, that put this shit together and shit, you know what I'm saying? It's just people got to live by code. They, if, if that's the life that they say they live in, you know what I'm saying? If you ain't living that by, by the code, then you shouldn't be claiming that type of shit because that shit could get you killed. I'm just curious. Do you have GDs, GDs, vice lords, all that? Oh man, Phoenix is a melting pot. Everybody moving out here, man. There's people in Cali out here. They got the GDs out here. They got the Vice Lords out here and stuff. Chicago niggas done moved out here. The Midwest is out here. Detroit niggas is out here. You know what I'm saying? Phoenix is a big melting pot. Uh, overseas niggas is out here. Uh, Africans is out here. Dude. Everything is out here. Dude. You know what I'm saying? We got the Pisces. We got the Hispanics out here. China man's out here. Everybody's out here in Phoenix and shit. Phoenix is a big melting pot. It's, it's a lot of love out here in this city. It's a beautiful thing and shit. But as, as far as the police go, once you get involved with the law, yeah, that's when it, 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 it takes its toll on you. Shit. But Joel Powell was the sheriff out here for a minute. He was putting the press on stuff. That's why, honest to God, uh, the streets is clean out here because Joel Powell, nigga, he was taking up the jail left him. <laughs> Right. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> just getting locked the up over this shit and shit. And he created the tent city and all that shit. Because scared to go to jail, nigga. You know, you don't want to be in jail out here. This is not the place you want to be locked up at. Hot as 123 degrees outside. Now, is that the place where they make some of the prisoners wear pink? Well, the prison wasn't tent. It was, that's just the county jail. They had the tent. They, they had the tent system for. People like, uh, um, I guess, uh, lower tier crimes and shit. You know what I'm saying? If you had a, if you had a high tier crime, you live in Ten City. You know what I'm saying? Okay. That's for people doing DUIs and, you know what I'm saying? Probably domestic violence mm -hmm. or something like that. But if you kill somebody or you shot somebody or robbed something, you're not going to be in Ten City. Did you ever go to prison? Uh, no, I've I've been blessed enough to beat a lot of my cases. It's, it's, it's a blessing to win. It's a blessing to win. So you got to fight for yourself. The first nice. thing to do by fighting for fighting for yourself is shutting the hell up and just going to jail. You know what I'm saying? Shut the hell up. Go to jail. Get you an attorney. You know what I'm saying? What was the biggest case that you fought that could have got you the most time? Uh, armed, armed robbery. Uh, when I was 19 years old, I beat an armed robbery case. Mm. Yep, uh, I was young, and I was, I was young, and I made some bad decisions and stuff. You know what I'm saying? I was fortunate enough to beat the case. Man. And I ain't gonna be out there because I beat the case and stuff. And God, God bless me to win, and I ain't gonna be out here trying to rob nobody again. <laughs> So you started in 94. How old were you? I was, uh, yeah, 14 years old, 14, 15 years old. Okay, let's say let's say you could talk to a 15-year-old uh, that, that is thinking about joining the Crips. He, he's, he's about to go full in. What would you say to him? Uh, I don't know. I'll tell his ass to stay in school, honestly. You know what I'm saying? Honestly, the Crips and Bloods is supposed to be uh, we 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 supposed to be um, we supposed to be leaders in, in our community and this stuff was built to, you know what I'm saying protect our communities and shit and it's just people got Bloods and Crips got to get back to the original purpose you know what I'm saying the original purpose is to protect our neighborhoods and stuff from from the police and shit from get from up getting oppressed in our communities and shit and then we turned against each other. You know what I'm saying? We were supposed to be helping the community, and then we learned that we went to turning against each other and fighting each other, and, and, and people got to get back to the to the real ideal, the real the real the real uh, purpose of why this shit was even created and shit. Because and, and niggas lost the purpose, and now people think that, that, that being a gangster is about being an asshole or being some other that's just being a disrespectful mother. But the main thing about being a gangster is about respect. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? It's about respect. You know what I'm saying? A certain type of way. So, well, I'll tell a young person that it's about, man, it's, it's about respect, man. You got to respect yourself and be yourself. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I tell a lot of young niggas to go to just stay in school, nigga, get your education. You know what I'm saying? 
because you're going to have to have a job. You're going to have to be able to take care of yourself a certain type of way out here and stuff. And you already got your, your color against you. Your race, is, your race is already against you. You know what I'm saying? It's best, it's best to be smart out here. If you're going to be out here in the streets, you got so much stuff against you that's, that can hold you back and stuff, you know, so, so you don't need, you don't need that, oh, you're in a gang to pull you, the, the extra things that they can add against you, you know what I'm saying, so they don't want to, they don't want to let you move in because this, that, or this, that, or, you know what I'm saying, you can't be part of this society because all this extra bullshit that you're adding on to, on top of the fact that you're black, or the, on top of the fact that you may be even Hispanic because, no, they treat Hispanics like they used to treat niggas. You know what I'm saying? So like they like the new niggas. You know what I'm saying? So it's like <clears throat> everybody getting they shot there. The white man that did everybody dirty and shit, one way or another. Like they got the Indians that they done did it to the China man. And everybody get they shot with the white man. You know what I'm saying? He always, <laughs> he always get and, and and they do their own people dirty too. So you know what I'm saying? So it's like like. Everybody, everybody get their shot with it. You know what I'm saying? So the best thing that we can be is smart. You know what I'm saying? So go to school and get some up education and shit. You know what I'm saying? Bring some knowledge and shit. Have some skills about you. You know what I'm saying? That you could be able to make your, uh, do something, do something for your culture and shit. You know what I'm saying? We got, we got to be able to build our culture up stronger. Damn, dude. I can't think of a better way to end the interview on boy. Where can we find you? Do you want to promote anything? Yeah, I'm on um, I'm on Spotify. I'm on uh, I'm on um, iTunes, Amazon, everything. I got a video. I got two videos on YouTube. I'm about to release some new stuff called um, Number Bangers. Stick high, Number Bangers. You know what I'm saying? So if you uh, look up Stick High, you got to spell my name with two C's, no K, S T I C C H Y D E. You Google me and you'll find all my stuff. That's right. That's S T I C C. Last question before I, I hang up on hang up with you. Top five rappers of all time. Top five rappers of all time. Tupac. Uh, they say um, Tupac. Uh, we gotta get uh, oh, shit. Uh, top five. Uh, I still do now. Because you got like fifty. Yeah. You want to put in on uh, <laughs> Uh, Tupac, Ice Cube, uh, uh, let me see, let me see, let me see, uh, DMX, um, let me see, uh, uh, let me see, let me see, let me see, uh, Tupac, Ice Cube, DMX, uh, let me see, um, I'm with T.I. and I'm with Nipsey at the end. <laughs> there it is, homie. There it is. Hey, it's been a pleasure, man. I'd love to have you on in the future for a part two, dude. No doubt. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity. I appreciate it. You got it, homie. I'll stay in touch, all right? All right. All right, man. Peace, dude. All right, peace. Thank you.